Well, hi, trade friends. Welcome to the Ozark Mill and Southern Railway. I'm Bill B., and whether you're a longtime subscriber to the channel or you're just stopping by for the first time, I'm glad you're here. In this video, I'm going to show you how I colored the rock castings for the section of backdrop I've been working on for the OMS. It's right back here. So let's get on board and get started. <laughs> Those familiar with the backdrop project will remember I started with a blank slate, which I made from three pieces of insulation foam board. I then glued some hardboard pieces to the foam board to represent a retaining wall. If you are not familiar with the backdrop project, you may want to take a look at parts one and two. I then created a number of rock castings and attached them to the backdrop. I also added some basswood strips to the retaining wall. Next, using some plaster of Paris, I filled in the gaps between the castings to give the rock face a more cohesive and realistic appearance. Then to prepare to color the rock face, I painted it with a coat of white gesso. I also then applied a gray primer to the retaining wall. After everything had dried, I was ready then to begin coloring the rock face. Before um, starting the process, I did put down some, uh, some plastic. I taped it to the top of the retaining wall to kind of protect it and the uh, top of my train table. And then I began uh, with, with, a, with a small uh, paintbrush I began uh, working some black uh, temper powder into the crevices of the rock face. I would highly encourage anyone doing this to, uh, to wear a face mask to avoid getting uh, the black tempera into your, into your nostrils and your lungs. It doesn't take long to do, but I did kind of speed it up, you can tell, just to kind of move things along. Once I was satisfied I'd gotten the temper paint properly applied, I began uh, to uh, hose it down with uh, uh, some, some uh, water and a spray bottle. Now I'm actually trying to work uh, the, uh, the black temper off the casting uh, using the spray bottle. And then here later I'll use a sponge to kind of dab some of it up. But you want to try to get about as much as you can off the casting, uh, leaving just uh, the black uh, tempera paint in the uh, crevices. There, applied a little more black temper where I thought I'd perhaps I'd worked a little bit too much of it off. Here I am coming back now again with the spray bottle, just trying to get a little more of that temper paint off. Kind of, let it dry, kind of let that dry then. Now, using a, a paintbrush, I'm applying some uh, Liquitex uh, Natural uh, Gray, a very thin, very thin uh, coating of uh, this, this, this natural gray uh, acrylic paint over over my, my my rock face, just to kind of give it a little bit of a, a little more of a gray. It's such a light, it's such a light um, um, mixture um, that you hardly, you can hardly tell the difference. I applied several coats of it and kind of let them dry between coats a little bit. I 
guess while I'm waiting for it to dry, I decided I was gonna put, I put down a little uh, uh, guess was, uh, raw sienna acrylic paint on top of the, uh, the rock face there. That will, later that will be covered in, uh, in some good old uh, Ozark uh, colored, uh, uh, light, light uh, orange colored dirt. Now using a fan brush, that's why I call it a fan brush. Um, very common, uh, commonly used with, with uh, acrylics and uh, tempera paint. It has a very delicate touch. And so I kind of like it for this, this, for this kind of process. Put it on a little, a little heavier than I did uh, the gray paint. And here I am kind of working it, working it in a little bit. Applying a little moisture there with the spray bottle, kind of get it to kind of run down the rock, rock face there. Here I'm just I put a little water on the brush, and I'm just kind of moving it, moving the paint around a little bit. Let that dry. Now I'm coming back with, uh, with uh, I think now it's a little uh, uh, burnt sienna, or it may have been some raw umber. There are basically three, four colors that are very commonly used uh, for this kind of purpose: are uh, raw sienna, burnt sienna, uh, raw umber, and burnt umber. And uh, I think I used all all four of them here a little. On this, but primarily, I used the raw sienna, the burnt sienna, and the raw umber after I'd applied that, uh, that uh, neutral gray earlier. If you don't like, you know, how things are looking, you can take you can take your uh, your spray bottle and uh, and kind of hose it down a little bit, wash it off, and. Uh, is to kind of reapply uh, your, your paints if you want to. Um, it's kind of a trial and error kind of thing. Here, I guess while while the things are drying, I decided I was going to put down some uh, some uh, burnt, or excuse me, I think it was some raw sienna uh, along the uh, along the rock face at the bottom of the rock face here, where again I'll have some of that uh, Missouri uh, Ozark uh, dirt applied down beneath the. Uh, the rock face a little later on. Now I'm just putting on a little bit of very watered down burnt umber, kind of finishing things up here. Just a little touch of burnt umber here and there. Well, here is our finished product, the rock face. I'm thinking it looks pretty good. Above the rock face, you can see where I have painted the foam board a dark green. In part four, I'm going to try to create a uh, convincing uh, forested area, and I hope you'll stay tuned for that. So until we meet again on the OMS, do take care, and remember, the OMS is pulling for you. This is Bill B. Bye now.